Today we're going to walk you through how to get started with the DS28 E38 Evaluation Kit for Maxim Integrated. First, let's take a look at what's included in the DS28 E38 EV Kit. This kit includes two DS9121 socket boards, a DS9481P-300 USB to one wire and I2C adapter, a USB cable, five DS28 E38 parts, and five DS2476 parts. Now let's set up the kit. Begin by connecting one of the DS9121 socket boards to the DS9481P adapter. Open the socket and insert a DS28 E38 device. And close the socket. The DS2476 is an optional component within the system. To use the DS2476, insert the other DS9121 socket board into the first. Set jumpers JP1 and JB1 is shown. And insert a device into the socket. Finally, connect the USB cable between the adapter and the computer. Now that the kit is all set up and ready to go, we continue by installing the software that we downloaded from the Maxim website. There are two versions of the software available, a light version, which I'll be showing you today, and a full version, which is available upon request. This installer uses a simple wizard format. Click Next at each step to proceed with installing the software. An additional wizard will be shown if you are installing the DS9481P-300 drivers. Now we click Finish to launch the installed software. The interface is divided into several panels. The top left panel contains the steps necessary to set up and authenticate a DS28 E38 device. The panel to the right contains context specific information for each step. The bottom panel contains log messages as well as one wire and I2C communication traffic that is generated as the result of each step. We begin by connecting our hardware and then we proceed to detect the adapter and software. Once an adapter is detected, the status in the bottom right corner of the screen will be updated. We begin with the first step. Setup System. In this step, we are asked to enter or generate an ECDSA key pair that will be shared among all devices in the system. The key pair can either be entered into the corresponding data fields, or a new key pair can be generated by clicking the Run button. You can see that an ECDSA key pair has been populated into the corresponding data fields. Now we'll proceed to the next step, Detect Device. In this step, the Read Status Device command and read ROM, ROM command are used to read the MAN ID and ROM ID of the device for later authentication and to verify that an active device is on the line. When we execute the step, you can see that the corresponding IDs have been populated and the one wire traffic is shown in the bottom panel. It is also possible to navigate between steps by clicking in the tree view on the left upper panel. Setup device is broken down into three sub-steps, which are instructed to complete in order. Now we'll proceed to the first sub-step, generate key pair. In this step, we generate an ECDSA key pair that is unique to this device. For this, we use the device command, generate ECDSA key pair, which will use the device's onboard random number generator for uniqueness. Note that using the chip DNA physically unclonable feature, or PUF, as the private key is not available in the light version of the software. We execute the step and we see that the generated key pair has been populated. Now let's proceed to the next step where a certificate will be created that binds the device ECDSA key pair to the system key pair. Some steps, such as this one, have a context specific information pop-up that can be accessed by clicking the info button. This information pop-up shows how data elements shown in the main window are used to compose the ECDSA certificate. 
Note that setting protection on the certificate is only available in the full version of the software. We execute the step and we see that the certificate has been populated into the corresponding data fields. At this point, the certificate has been loaded into page 0 and 1, and we are given the opportunity to configure the remaining user pages 2 and 3. We'll load example data into each page, Protection is only available in the full version of the software. Pages can be either enabled or disabled for programming by using the checkbox to the left of the data field. Now we run this step to load the data into our user pages. The next step, Authenticate Device, is also broken down into two sub-steps, so we'll proceed to the first step. The first step to authenticating a device is to verify the certificate. This step also contains a context-sensitive information pop-up that shows how the data fields displayed on the main screen are used to verify the certificate. We run the step and we see that our device has been successfully verified. Remaining steps, including verify page signature, decrement counter, and read RNG are only available in the full version of the software. Additional features of note include a command sequence reference useful for decoding one-wire traffic, the ability to use the DS2476 secure coprocessor as an ECDSA engine when using the full version of the software, and the ability to set the one-wire adapter to overdrive speed. Additionally, it is also possible to save configuration information such as the system key pair and device user data to a file for later use. These options can be accessed from the file menu. To find more information or download the software, please visit our website at maximintegrated.com/ds28e38evkit.